Bishop Henry R. Williams, co-pastor Gwendolyn Williams, and the Word of Oasis Church family. <laughs> we welcome you with love. your garment of praise and worship, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for being our sovereign God, for being our Father God. We just worshiped you, oh God. We thank you for your love that you sent through Jesus Christ, that now we have salvation and now we are joined heirs to the throne, oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come in and have your way this morning as we come in with hearts uplifting and worshiping you, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God, and we are grateful for your many blessings that you bestowed upon us, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, that you kept us from things seen and unseen, oh God, but you sent your protection and your love, oh God. We thank you this morning as we come in to worship you this day, oh God, that we declare that this, oh God, we thank you that your kingdom come, oh God that your will will be done in this earth. So we give you free ring into every area of our lives, oh God. As we submit our will and our way, oh God, and our intellect, Father, to you and our family, God. We thank you, oh God, for your love and your hedges of protection that steadily remain around us, oh God. We thank you for keeping your angels about us to keep us, oh God. And Father, this morning as we come in, oh God, we make a demand, oh God, and we thank you that you set up this atmosphere in this house, oh God, and within us, oh God. That Father, that you receive the glory through worship and through praise, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God. We bind every disturbing measure that would try to come and, dis and, dis and, Father, and destroy your 
a word, oh God, this morning, oh God. But we thank you for your release of your word this morning, oh God. We thank you that Jesus Christ is the Lord over the airways, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you as your word come this morning, oh God. That as ears hear it, oh God both present and those who are streaming, oh God, that our lives would never be the same again, Father. We thank you this morning, oh God, for salvation for those who will hear your word this morning, oh God. We thank you for you drawing them to you, God, through your word, oh God. And we bind the attack of the enemy, God, that will try to keep them in the same way that they're in. But I thank you this morning, Father, for your abundant life that you will give to them, oh God, as they receive you as their Lord and Savior, God. We thank you this morning for the body of believers here at Wu, oh God. That, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us, oh God. Man try to be formed and will not prosper, God, because we are more than conquerors through you, oh God. Father, we lift up this nation before you, oh God. And your word said, oh God, if my people who are called by my name, we are your people, God, have turned from our ways, oh God. And, Father, that we will seek you, that you said that you will bless our land, oh God. So, Father, right now, Father, I displace and bind every spirit of fear. Father, every spirit of chaos, oh God. Every murderous and injustice spirit, oh God. Every laden heart, oh God. Every spirit of loneliness, oh God. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of suicide, oh God. And we release because you've given us authority, oh God. The peace of God that will guard our hearts and minds through you, God. We dispatch your angels throughout, Father, this nation to bring peace, oh God. Father, I thank you, God, that we continue to seek you first, oh God. Kingdom of God. And we know everything else will be added unto us, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God, because we have made a choice, oh God, as we put our faith together, God, our persistent faith, oh God, to pray, Father, in season and out, God, for one another and those throughout this nation, oh God. We ask that you will continue, God, to give safety, oh God, in this time of election, oh God. That you will cover and send forth your angels, oh God. I declare this morning, oh God, that we will never grow weary, God. But we will do the work that you sent us to do, oh God. And now, God, we pray for the word that will come this morning, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that as it go out, oh God, that it fall on good ground, oh God. That we receive it for the truth that it is, oh God. We thank you for our pastors, oh God, and their family, Bishop Harry R. William, Pastor Gwendolyn William, Brother Aaron and Rashana and Shakira William, oh God. We appreciate them, oh God. We love them, oh God, because they love your flock, oh God. And we will be obedient to do the work of the Lord that you sent us here to do as visionaries, oh God, that have given it to us, oh God. Thank you for giving us the courage to run with it, oh God, to use our gifts and abilities, oh God to make it so, oh God. And now, God, we thank you, God, as we move from prayer to praise, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you receive our prayer, oh God. And your word said that we have this confidence in you, oh God, that as we pray our word, your word, oh God, and your will, that it shall come to pass, oh God. And we give you all glory, God. We give you all the honor, God. We thank you for being overcomers through you, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the name of the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship him with us. Father, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Come on. Raise the praise in this place. Here we go. Right this morning. the branches he who abides in me will forever be fruitful in thee yes yeah he said I am the way yeah the truth and the life no one gets to the father 
worship that he comes through me. Yeah. And let not mercy, let not mercy and, true, and true forsake me. Forsake let it not forsake me. Forsake let not mercy, let not mercy and, true, and true forsake me. about the word of God. So you really on the right thing. Write yeah. on the tablet of your heart. Come on. Yeah. Now you say, I am the way. I am the way. Truth and the life. Truth and the light. No one gets to the Father. Yeah. Except, come on. Except that they come through me. Because I can't live without it. Yeah. Lord, I can't do without it. I will hide your word in my heart. Now somebody worship him. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Thank God for his word. We need your word. Can't live without it. I can't move without it. I will hide. Lean not, say, lean not to your own understanding. Come on, worship Woo! him. Hey, 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 yeah. oh, oh, Come on, nigga, I'm excited oh, about the word of God today. Yeah. Is anybody excited? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody excited? Lift your voice and say, lean not, say, lean not to your own understanding. Hey. Depend on him. 
when everything else has failed. Yeah, his word Woo. will never fail. Come on, say, lean not, say, lean not to your own understanding. I will hide your word. I will hide your word. In my Come on, heart. yeah, I will hide your word. I will hide your word. Write it over your doorpost. I will hide your word in my heart. Even on their forehead, say. I will hide your word in my heart. Yeah, I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. Yeah, I will hide your word. I will hide your word in my heart. When I don't have nothing else, I stand I on his word. Hide your word yeah. in my heart. Yeah, I will hide your word. David said, I hide his word that I might not sin against him. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Worship the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Come on. Here we go. And lean on. Lean on to your own. the name of the Lord. Come on, he's the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the true and living word. Woo! Hey. And I can't live without him. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 Come yeah, on, yeah. thank you. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Come on, thank God for that word. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you that with the word of God, if you hide that word in your heart, look at somebody and say, I will never be defeated. Come on, I will never be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right where you are, just begin to worship him in your own way because we know that God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, oh God. You're so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Song says, I shall rise. I shall be. I shall go in victory. No weapon formed against me will ever overtake me. Listen. And because God is the greatest power yeah. we shall never never be defeated and because God is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated if you know you've got victory Woo. just lift a shout of praise to him this morning hallelujah thank you for victory Come on, praise team. Let's sing that verse. Come on. Say, I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. I shall go. I shall go. Victory. Victory. No weapon form. Weapon form. Against me. Against me. Will never. Will never. Overtake me. And because. Power. We shall never, we shall never, never be 
the church would go under and what's the church going to do and the church is panicking and we don't know how we're going to reach the people but I thank God for something called technology I thank God that we're able to still connect even when we're not presently seeing each other face to face and I want to encourage those who are here and even those who are watching us we'll never be defeated the Bible says upon this rock yeah. I wish I had a church this Woo! morning. Come on, Upon yeah. this rock, Come on, yeah. he'll build his church, yeah. and the gates of hell shall not Woo! prevail. Come on. And because God is the greatest is power. Worship him right where you are. He's the greatest power, and he'll never be defeated. Great is the Lord, and he's greater to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 And guess what? And you will never be defeated, because greater is he that is within you. Yes, sir than he that's in the world. Yeah. Come on and celebrate God this morning and give him a praise. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He will never be defeated. Hallelujah. 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 And you better believe me this morning, the enemy, the devil knows that. And the only thing he tries to do is bring himself to you as an illusion to make you think that he has more power than what he really has. But he's already defeated. He was defeated when Jesus Christ died on the cross. And when he arose on the third day morning, he said, I've got all power in my hand. I got the key. Hallelujah. The death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel the presence of God right now. Come on, worship him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll never be the Come on, say it again. Come on, come on. We shall never be defeated. Because God is the greatest power. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. you never be defeated. Well, we want to welcome our partners back to our in-person worship this morning. Those of you that have decided to join us, thank you for coming. God bless you. We appreciate you. We miss you. And, uh, and uh, we've been praying for you and we'll continue to lift you and prayer. Thank you. God bless you. And thank those of you that are streaming this service on whatever platform you're watching it in this morning. Thank you for tuning in to Word of Oasis Worship Experience. God's blessings be upon you. And guess what? God has a blessing with your name on it. Hallelujah. So stay tuned. I'm going to turn it over to our media department and I'll be back in just a moment. Welcome to our church, Word of Oasis. We're glad you're here. Do you have questions? Like, what is church? I'll tell you what it's not. Church is not a building. It's people like you and I. People who love God and love others. Well, here at Word of Oasis, we believe God's Word, the Bible. 
We trust his promises. We share the good news, declaring Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus lives again. Most of all, Jesus lives in us. And we want you to know he wants you to be a part of his family. So, who are we? We are the church. We were sinners, saved by grace. Flawed, but forgiven. Broken, but made beautiful. Imperfect, but perfectly loved by a perfect God. So, who are we? We are the church. And so we say, welcome to Word of Oasis. Welcome to Word of Oasis. God bless you. You can't go to heaven until you worship with us here at Word of Oasis. One of the greatest churches on the planet with some of the greatest partners in the world. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Well, we want to continue uh, to keep uh, Mother Mary Nelson and family in our prayers. Her sister passed away on last Sunday, and uh, she's uh, 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 there, I believe, with her family in uh, Canton, Ohio. And the services will be on Tuesday. So we want to continue to keep uh, Mother Nelson and her family in our prayers. All right? And we want to give a birthday shout out to Brother Memlon Williams today. Happy birthday. And as he said, happy Earth Day. And uh, as only he can say. And uh, so we want to uh, just wish you a happy birthday and that you will have the best day ever and experience many more to come. God bless you. Appreciate you. Well, let's go to the word of the Lord. Mark chapter 8 is our text passage of scripture. And you know what we do before receiving the word of the Lord. Let's state our faith confession. Say, this is God's inspired word. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I'm about to receive the incorruptible indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I open my ears to hear God's Word. I open my spirit to receive God's Word. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. And my life will never, ever be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, and let's go to the 22nd verse. And this morning, I'm going to be speaking to you from this subject, another touch. Another touch. Don't, don't touch your neighbor, but look at your neighbor and say, another touch. Another touch. Mark's Gospel, Chapter 8, verse 22, I'm reading from the CEV version. And the word of the Lord reads, As Jesus and his disciples were going into Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch the man. Jesus took him by the hand and led him out of the village where he spit into the man's eyes. He placed his hands on the blind man and asked him if he could see anything. The man looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. Once again, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes, and this time the man stared. His eyes were healed. And he saw everything clearly. Jesus said to him, you may return home now, but don't go into the village. You can be seated in the presence 
of the Lord. Another touch. Another touch. I heard Pastor E. Dewey Smith said that uh, that he wished that the hands of time could be turned back on the year, not just the time itself. This week, I know that our clocks were set back an hour. Uh, this year has been a year none of us anticipated. We, we are dealing with new norms. We are dealing with uh, a different uh, structure, paradigm, shifts are taking place. It is making some people uncomfortable because they are not liquid. They are not fluid. They are not able to transcend and to change and flow with the tides. It doesn't matter what we feel about what's going on, not only with COVID, but uh, our social, economical situation, political uh, climate of our country. Uh, it is one thing for sure that where we came from, we are never going back there again. We're never going back there again. Another touch. Let me thrust in because my time is limited. The healing of the blind man near Bethsaida is the only recorded miracle performed by Jesus where the healing was initially incomplete. This man needed a second touch to experience full restoration of sight. We find some additional information about the miracle setting in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 20 through 22 where Bethsaida and Chorazin are rebuked for their unwillingness to embrace the ministry of Christ. Uh, the wickedness that dominated the area appears to be a contributing factor to the miracles taking place outside the city. While we must concede that this miracle raises some questions that we might not ever know the full answer to until we get the glory. We can learn some significant lessons from walking trees that enables us to follow Christ more effectively. Let me hasten for time. Number one, I have a few points uh, this morning, but point number one is, please hear me very carefully, that friends can move us closer to are further from God. Uh, friends can move us closer to or further from God. The Bible says the blind man's friends brought him to Jesus. Uh, in a similar healing of a crippled man who also had friends who tore open a roof and lowered their friend to Jesus. This story describes a small group that was concerned for their friend. You see, friendship is important to God. It's important to God. The Bible says uh, in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10, it says two are better than one, for they have a good return for their labor. When one falls down, the other can pick him up. But pity the man who, when he falls, has no one to pick him up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus described his followers as friends. Proverbs declare the positive benefit of friends even if we don't like what they say because the wounds of a friend are sweeter than the kisses of an enemy. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me this morning. Uh, friends, friends can also have a negative influence on our life. Proverbs is full of warnings not to hang out with fools who mock God because they will uh, lead you down a path of destruction. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, bad company corrupts good morals. 
uh, examples of negative influence in the scripture includes when Israel listened to the evil report of ten spies instead of Joshua and Caleb. Israel asked for a king because they wanted to be like other nations instead of the redemptive uniqueness that God designed for them. Uh, Herod executed John the Baptist because he was afraid of being considered weak in front of his pagan friends. Uh huh. An angry mob demanded Christ to be crucified instead of the convicted murderer Barabbas. Uh, uh, Demas and Alexander harmed the Apostle Paul because they loved the world. Other uh, examples uh, could be cited, and many of you know uh, uh, of personal stories of people who made bad decisions due to friends' negative influence. Uh, fortunately, the blind man from Bethsaida had friends who led their friends closer to Jesus. I have two pertinent questions to ask you this morning. And, and number one, do you have friends who push you closer to Jesus? Uh, and the second question is, 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 are you a friend who inspires others to follow Christ more closely? Or do you lead others away from Christ? Uh, let me hasten. Point number two is, is that faith is shared, not borrowed. Faith is shared, not borrowed. Uh, friends, friends, friends can and should inspire us, but their faith can never substitute for personal faith in Jesus Christ. In, in this story, Jesus led the blind man away from the city and his friends to experience a personal encounter with the Savior. In every church, some people are cultural Christians, mm -hmm, which means Christianity is more heritage of habit than a defining devotion uh, to Christ. Uh, many, many church members lack a conviction to follow Christ because they have never been saved. Mm -hmm. the, church, the church is just a place where they hang out for an hour on Sunday because that is what they have done all their life. Uh -huh. But faith is shared, not borrowed. A point number three uh, uh, is, is that the master's touch transcends tradition. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced one of the reasons why Jesus performed this miracle differently was to remind us that God cannot be put in a box. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe you've heard the joke, uh, uh, how many Baptists does it take to change a light bulb? Uh, the answer is no one knows for sure because the chairman of the deacon board protested at the business conference saying we ain't voting to change anything. Uh, I, uh, it's just a joke. Uh, don't take it personal. Uh, several years ago, several years ago, I heard of a professor and author named Leonard Sweet uh, share about being rebuked when he took his laptop into the pulpit instead of a leather-bound Bible. The professor explained that he had several translations, including Hebrew and Greek, and downloaded on his computer, but the church stood firm. No computers, only Bibles in the pulpit. Well, I got my iPad, so they wouldn't let me in the pulpit. So, uh, but, but listen, but listen, it, it is ironic and sad that we worship the creator, yet one of the least creative places on the planet is the church. What is the best way to experience the power and the love of God, I ask? Is it, is it through preaching, singing, praying, or observing the beauty of nature? There are multiple ways to encounter Christ. Jesus healed by spitting on one man. I will confess that I am glad that the church did not adopt this method as the best way to confer a blessing. Uh -huh. Jesus placed mud on the eyes of another. He touched, 
in a ceremonial fashion. I don't have time to get into that because my time is almost up. But for, for some blessings, Jesus spoke and demons fled and the dead were raised. And I say again to you, don't put God in a box. You, 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 may, have, you may have yet to experience the best way that God desires to communicate and demonstrate his power in your life. Let me hit the fourth point. My fourth point is that some nails need more than one hit. Uh-huh. Some nails need more than one hit. Look at your neighbor and say, some nails need more than one hit. Or why did Jesus have to touch the man twice? Perhaps it was because the affliction was so severe. As already mentioned, Matthew identifies this region as unresponsive to Christ and his ministry. Living in that environment would have made the man susceptible, listen, to demonic strongholds. We have other biblical examples of where uh, repeated efforts were necessary to accomplish the desired results. Uh, the Bible tells us that Joshua marched around Jericho 13 times before the wall came down. Mm -hmm. Elijah prayed seven times before the rain came down. Jesus prayed three times, let this cup pass from me. The king of glory faced some enemies that refused to go away at the first punch, so Jesus hit them again. You see, like driving a nail into a piece of wood, you will face some challenges that requires more than one strike of the hammer. So hit it again. Look at your neighbor and say, hit it again. 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 My, my fifth point, my fifth point and my last point, is that we need to seek additional blessings. We need to seek additional blessings. A final lesson from this story can be observed in the question Jesus asked. He said, what do you see? Keep in mind that Jesus never asked questions for information. Uh -huh. he, he is a God, he is God in the flesh. He knows all things, even the thoughts of a man. So Jesus already knew what the man could see when he asked the question. You see, Jesus is seeking the, in, to, to impart revelation to the blind man, not to get information from him. Uh -huh. Other examples in the scripture where God used questions to teach includes when Cain, he said, where is your brother? Uh -huh. Moses, Moses, he said, what is that in your hand? God's asking questions. God asked Elijah, what are you doing hiding here on Mount Horeb? Mm -hmm. Jesus asked several significant questions. He said, who do people say that I am? Uh-huh. Uh, he said, who is your neighbor? Uh-huh. He said, what should we, what should we feed the multitudes? Mm -hmm. Bartimaeus, what do you want the Son of Man to do for you? Jesus asks significant questions. Uh-huh. You see, Jesus, Jesus knew what the man could see. But he asked the question desiring for the man to seek one more touch. You see, most people are content with just a little blessing. Uh -huh. they, just, they just got a belly get by mentality. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They never, they never, most, no, most never pray a Jabez prayer. Lord, bless me indeed. Mm -hmm. most, most are satisfied with one touch of salvation knowing it would get them to heaven but they continue to live without the fullness that Jesus promised you see most people would have answered the question uh, what do you see like this things are a little blurry but I'll be alright when, when I get a little more time 
I, I, I'll come back, but, but I have some other things to do first. You see, there, there is a lot, there's a lot we can learn from this divine incident. Overall, we can trust that God is aware of the state of our faith and what needs to be done to cause it to grow. You see, he desires to take us to the places of solitude with him that we may otherwise avoid. You see, the prescription, listen to me this morning, the, pres the prescription of quietude was good for the man's spiritual discipline. Y'all don't hear what I say. I say the prescription of quietude. You see, faith and obedience are what Christ acts of us. Whether in a solitude or community, we must be open to his pursuit of our souls through the presence of the Holy Spirit so that our relationship with him may grow in understanding. It is often while in communion with Christ that we experience his healing touch fully. You see, also, we are reminded by this account that Jesus knows our hurts and meets us where we are to take us to a place of complete redemption. You see, he will not stretch our faith more than we can handle, but will tend to our wounds as he reveals more of himself to us. Through the instance of the blind man healing at Bethsaida, we are given an account of how Jesus opened the eyes of our hearts so that we can see him more clearly. Uh, because when the eyes of this man was open, the first person that he could see once that touch, that second touch came, it was Jesus. See, the first time Jesus touched him, the first time it was, it, was, it was more ceremonial when he used spittle. I told you I don't have time to get into it. My time is running out. But spittle was not something that was abnormal at that time. This is not something that only Jesus did. Spit was, 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 was supposed to be something that was sacred. Because now you got to understand the spit that came from Jesus' mouth was God's spit. It was the spit of God. God spit on this man. But he did that so he can show him that, listen, I know that there are ways that man lacks to do things. Oh. He, 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 he's, letting, he's letting the man know, listen, there are times that whereby I know you want to handle things in your own self according to your methodology. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, but, but listen, but listen, but when he did that, he saw men as trees. Uh, you know, you, you, it's, it's as though he still had cataracts on his eyes. He could not see clearly. Now the thing is, is that you got to really look at the fact that when he said, I see men as trees, indicates that this man was not born blind. Because for him to say he see men as trees, that mean that at one time he saw some trees. I ain't going to go there. Don't you mess with me this morning. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't intend to sweat. I ain't going there. But, but in any case that he had sight at one time, the question is, is what caused him to lose his sight? What caused him? I don't have time to deal with it. I'll let Minister Brandon deal with that. Hey, uh, 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 what caused him to lose his sight? Sometimes we can lose our sight by the company we keep it. Sometimes we can lose our peripheral vision because we're hanging around the wrong people that don't have your best interests at heart. God, let me, I ain't going to bother that. I'm, I, I got 13 minutes to close this service out. But I'm telling you, Jesus said, hold on just a minute. Let me touch you one more time. 
We tried the natural, now let's try the supernatural. And when he touched the man, when his eyes opened, this time the cataracts fell off. And the Bible said that he stared. That means that he, he, his, his focus now is where it should have been to start with, is on Jesus. And now the, next, now the next thing that is very key to his healing is now, see, how many know you can lose your healing too? You can get healed, but you can mess around and lose your healing because you're not obedient. So Jesus said, now, 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 listen, now, when you, when you walk from my presence, listen, he said, I don't want you to go back into that village. Don't go back into the stronghold. Don't go back to a familiar place. Don't go back to them old friends that you used to hang around. Now remember, it was friends that brought him to Jesus. But Jesus said, don't even go back to them. So, so his healing, the maintenance of his healing was contingent upon his obedience. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. You, you can go home, but don't go back into the village. I don't have time to stay there. I, I don't have time to stay there. I got to close my case. I got to close my case. Got to close my case. So Jesus asked the question, what do you see? Is he still asking the same questions today? Are things a little blurry in your life? Do you need a fresh touch from the master? Are you tired of trying to live off of someone else's testimony? Are you ready to seek a personal encounter with Christ? What do you see? Ask your name, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see and what are you going to do about it? Presently, our daily prayer should be that the Spirit might open the eyes of our understanding to discern more fully his divine will for our lives. Listen very carefully. Let me give you a quote from Helen Keller. And many of you know who she is. If you don't Google it, uh, Helen Keller said, the one thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Uh, you'll get it next week. Did you hear what she said? The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. You see, the quote states that while she is, she is not happy with being unable to see, she feels it's better than being able to see but not be able to imagine, to plan, to think beyond our meager existence. You see, this is it, and I'm going to hang my hat. This is what the Spirit told me to tell you. He said, he said, I hope that you have been making the best of your time during this quarantine to re-examine the past, to refocus for your next. Ah, did you hear me? Re-examine the past. Don't stay there, just examine it. Examine the past to refocus for your next. And can I close and tell you this? It won't cost you anything. That in order for you to find out what's next, Brother Duke, Mr. Brandon, you know what is required of you to discover your next? You got to come up here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Y'all still missed it. Y'all going to try to make me work. Here it is the first Sunday that we done allowed you to come back. <laughs> come up hither, the Spirit of the Lord said to John in the book of Revelation. The reason you will not ever find out what's next is because you're still in the barnyard with the chickens. Only eagles find out what's next. 
because they fly above the storm. They fly above the circumstances. They are beyond mediocrity. They are beyond those that live their lives with closed minds. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Some of you are not going to experience next. Some of you are not going to experience another dimension in your life because you're with the wrong company. I'm going I'm to leave. I got seven minutes to close this service. But if I could just tell you just one more thing, and this is it, Brother Chris, another touch. That's it, another touch. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, another touch. Did you get something this morning? Another touch. Another touch, another touch. We need him to touch us one more time. One more time. Before we move any further, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to receive of the Lord's table this morning. In just a few moments, our brothers are going to get the table. But I'm going to offer Christ to those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You need a touch from God. You don't need to continue to live your life the way you've been living. It's not working. Things are not going right for you in your life. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ right now. Just let me pray and just pray with me and let's believe the, the Lord together in faith. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and raised from the dead and seated on the right hand of God right now, praying for me according to your word. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. Come into my heart right now. I make you Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and accepting me into your family. In Jesus' name, you said amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Our brothers are bringing the table we're going to receive of the Lord. Now, when you came, those of you that are worshiping with us in person, you should have your communion set with you when you entered into the building. Those of you that are streaming this service, I want you to make sure you get you some juice, some crackers, whatever you have available, some bread, and let's prepare to receive of the Lord's table today together. He said, as often as you do this, it is a remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord God, preserve of all mankind. We lift the bread in your presence, which is your body that was broken for us. We ask that you would bless it now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God, preserve of all mankind. We lift the fruit of the vine in your presence, which is your blood that was shed for us. We ask that you would bless it now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Bible is clear in recording that in the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it as we just blessed it. And he told his disciples after he had broken it, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. We ask that you would take the bread from the top of your communion set. 
and that you partake this morning. Those of you that are streaming, partake of the, the body of Christ. In like manner, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he said, this is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Drink ye all of it. We ask that you would peel back the layer and drink of the blood of Christ. And as often as you do this, he said, it's in remembrance of my death until I come again. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Thank you for being a part of our communion service today. And we want you also to remember that he established a new covenant upon better promises. And a part of that is, is that by his stripes we are healed. You have a right to your healing. You have a right to your deliverance. You have a right to the fullness of what God has for you. Everything in your life that pertains to life and godliness is yours. It's a part of the covenant. Now just decree it and declare it. Make a demand on it in the name of Jesus. God bless you is our prayer. We're going to ask that you would uh, follow the direction of the ushers as far as disposal and we want to be safe as we continue our in-person worship. Listen, again, it has been a delight and a joy to see you and to, to have you here today. Partners, our guests, thank you. God bless you. And always, it's so good to have our streaming audience with us. Now, let me pronounce the blessing upon you before leaving this morning. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the church says, amen and amen. Now, I want to encourage you to join us on next Sunday for another time of prayer, inspirational worship, and a word from the Lord. Remember to do three things. I want you to like, comment, and share. May the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer. Love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Look to see you on next week. God bless you. From Bishop Henry R. Williams, co-pastor Gwendolyn Williams, in the Word of Oasis Church family. <laughs> we welcome you with love. Take it.
Pastor Gwendolyn Williams in the Word of Oasis Church family. 